we have come to Revelation chapter 18. It's been a long drive. I hope it has been an eye-opening drive. Uh, in the Dominican, because I've done the whole book of Revelation within five days. Now I know you folks, how does he do that? Why doesn't he do that to us? Well, because I really want to break down God's word in bite sizes. So that when we are done, you won't be taken down by some of the teachings that is floating around. So the request has already been made. This time I, because I've done the book of Revelation in Sosua area. So when, I, when the pastors, with the Haitian pastors, that was canceled because of the turmoil in Haiti and other circumstances the Dominican, I was going to be seeing the same people and I didn't want to repeat the book of Revelation. So I said, I will teach a little bit in depth the seven churches to give them understanding there's a lot of confusion there. And honestly, that was God's doing. And it was amazing to see how people connected with God's word, understood where they are and where they need to be. So a request has already been in place for me to do the same, the seven churches, the book of Revelation, uh, to a place in Porto Plata, which is just the next town. So I just told uh, Christian, I think your son Handy is capable of teaching this. If the Lord seems fit to bring me back, that's what we will do. But until then, I never assume. God knows where he wants us <clears throat> and when he wants us in certain place. So I leave that in God's hand. If that's where the Lord will lead us again, that's what we will do. But just to say, it is amazing. 60% of the audience in the first conference in this very remote place, I, first time I went there, I went with Alan. There was no church there. It was just a shack. Not even a shack that you'd be comfortable to stand under. Mm -hmm. And now there's a church with fans, <laughs> tile floor, <laughs> windows. But you know what I noticed? 60% of the people who came for the conference were men and women under the age of 25 and younger. And they were so hungry for the Word of God that in one sense it broke my heart because in our country we have so much. There isn't that hunger and thirsting. But there is there. But just to see these young people asking questions, hard questions, really wanting to know, connecting with God. So, and you will see in some of the slides, there were three young people. They were teenagers. I think the girl was 12 years old. One boy was... 15 or 16 and the other one was 17. Their parents are staunch Catholic. I mean, it's ingrained with the strongest Catholicism in the Dominican. When those three young people said, we want to be baptized, the parents said, absolutely no. And those young people said, we are going to go and follow Christ. Folks, in the Dominican is a different way, the way they raise their children. And these three young people defied their parents and chose to be baptized. It takes courage. And these young people had it. But their courage came from the love for Jesus Christ. But do you realize that you folks were the seed planters? I was humbled to see what has taken place as I looked over the history. When Alan started this ministry with Christian Rivers, as I stood in that church and spoke, 
I was humbled that God chose to use one man to spark such a fire for God. You know, we look for celebrities. We look for people who've done great things. Let me tell you, God is doing a great thing because of the humility and the faithfulness of one man he put among us. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing who God is? So now we go to Revelation chapter 18. What do you see in the, in the book of Revelation chapter 18? Remember, chapter 17 and 18, the book of Revelation are supplemental chapters, giving us a little bit more details for the background. In chapter 17, you see a woman riding on a scarlet beast. And she has got all the pomp and prosperity. It's really referring to this woman. She is a religious institution that has wealth beyond measure, that has popularity beyond. And then in chapter 18, you see how the religious institution has joined with the commercial institution and they've become a powerful entity. Can I say to you, that's not the church of Jesus Christ. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. That is where our world is heading towards, folks. This is where you hear once a church that was an evangelical church had now pasted in front of their doors the LBGT flag. Once they were evangelical church that believed life is precious, but now are saying women have rights to do with their body what they want to do. And those churches don't lack funds, people. They are the churches that are prom promoted by the politicians. And then you turn to a church like Upper Kings Clear Baptist Church. There's financial struggle, there's this struggle, there's that struggle. And you begin to ask, what is the pastor doing wrong? I'll be honest with you, and I'll say it very openly. It will be to my death, I will not deviate from God's word. Amen. Sometime when you stick to God's word, you'll become smaller, not bigger. And instead of being held up on your somebody's shoulder and parade around the town, they'll want to squash you. So let me just really quickly take you back. That's why we've gathered. You see, in Revelation 18, it's very interesting to read <coughs> what is coming, people. And I have already seen on the horizon what is taking place. It's even taking place and creeping into our churches. So that's why we need to know God's word and we know how to stand against it. You see, God would lead John to reveal the destruction of the commercial and the economic system that Babylon also symbolizes. In order to inform his readers of its end, in the future, you see Wall Street identifies a particular geographical locations in New York City, but it also represents a commercial economic system that has in its center there. Likewise, Babylon has throughout history represented a particular commercial economic system that originated in the geographical city of Babylon as well as a particular religious system. The desire to glorify self rather than God is the foundation of commercial economic Babylon. Remember in Genesis 11, 14, the Tower of Babel. When they were building the Tower of Babel, what was the cry? Let us make for ourselves a name. Folks, I only want one name lifted up in this church is the name of Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of Lords. 
is the King of Kings. And as I've given you permission, the day this pastor purports any other idea, you have the right to burn me at the stake. And for you elders, if you start purporting anything else, I will burn you at the stake. And you God's people, if you start saying, well, Pastor, why can't we have dance and why can't we have this and why can't we have bingo? We can raise a lot of money with bingo. I will burn you at the stake. Because you see, the Bible tells me one simple message. Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Do you know what is the most seducing thing to our churches today? How to attract people. And we are doing everything to attract people. Read John chapter 6. After Jesus said a very hard thing, many stopped following him. You know how I want to attract people? He's lifting Jesus Christ up. Because he can draw all men to himself. So you say, what has that got to do with the message this morning, Pastor? First you see the indictment of literal Babylon. And I just want to show you the parallels between chapter eight, 17 and chapter 18. And I'm going to be reading verses back and forth just for you to see the parallels. The indictment of the literal Babylon, verses 1 and 3. Let me read the text in Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. This is an angel. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of a sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. I wish I had the pictures to show you some of the luxurious churches throughout the United States of America. You go to Quebec, you look at those old Catholic monuments in that place. What a what architecture, what. But then as we entered, Gail and I entered there one time as we were traveling through. When you entered the place, it was cold. You see, the parallels between chapter 17 and 18 are distinctive as the differences. Note, Babylon's designations. It's just amazing as I was working through this message, and I know it's a little bit of a repeat, but I want us to catch up from there before we go on. The parallels between chapter 17 and 18 are as distinctive as the difference. I want you to note Babylon's designation. Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery. Babylon the great mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. Verse 18, Revelation 17, 18. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a hunt for every unclean spirit, a hunt for every unclean bird, a hunt for every unclean and detestable beast. And they will stand far off. Revelation 18.10 They will stand far off in fear of her torment and said, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. This is going to be a religious institution, folks, but it's also going to be a commercial institution.
its, des its description. Revelation chapter 17 verse 4. The woman was arrayed in purple, royalty, and scarlet, and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup, <clears throat> full of abominations and impurities of her sexual immorality. Revelation chapter 18 verse 6. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others. Repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she has mixed. Revelation 18, 16. Alas, alas for the great city that was clothed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels, and with pearls. You think, Pastor, that doesn't make sense. Well, let's just look into God's word. We see Babylon's designation. We see its description. We see its deeds. Revelation chapter 17, verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the vine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers of, uh, on earth have become drunk. And as so a woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, when I saw her, I marveled greatly. Revelation chapter 18, verse 3. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from her power and her luxurious living. Revelation 18.24 And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and all who has been slain on the earth. You think it would stop there? No, it doesn't. It's destruction. Revelation 17.16 and the ten horns you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute, and they will make her desolate and naked, and devour her flesh, and burn her up with fire. Verse 17, Revelation 17, 17, For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind, and handing over their royal power to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. Now look at Revelation 18, verse 5. For her sins are hipped as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Verse 8, 8, Revelation 18. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burnt up with fire. For mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. Now, why bring this up to God's people Sunday morning when you want to come and just praise and worship God? Let me tell you, we in the evangelical church are moving very close in that direction. Every church wants to be powerful, big, important. See, these are the churches the politician likes to drop in and show their face once a year or once at a time before they are chosen. Christian Rivers now is being called by politicians when they're going through election and they want him because they know he has got jurisdiction over the denomination in that area and there are a lot of churches under his care and he's saying to me, they are bribing me with everything I would want. He said, but pastor, I'm not buying into it. Because I know what the end is. <clears throat> is it any less for us here? I just got a letter from a politician. Now, he used to be a pastor one time, Brandon. He's a good man. Can I say to you, there is such a seduction to us Christians. People say, you know, why don't we do a big thing? I'm not afraid to do big things, people. But if the big things does not reflect and point to Jesus Christ, it's no big thing for me. We have one Savior who went on the cross for you and me. It's only Him we are required to lift up. So you come to the book of Revelation, what is the issue? You see, the religious institution is going to join up in the commercial world and they're going to have a big powwow. 
And people will look at the little churches and say, what's wrong with you guys? Join the game. Make something big. Make a splash. But I'll tell you, that splash is not going to be for Christ. It's going to be for self and our pride. And that's why a church who cannot have leaders, who are humble to serve him, should not be leaders in a church. I have seen it here in America. I've seen it in Canada. And I also saw it in the Dominican. And shame to us pastors when we are afraid to confront God's people. Because God's business is his business. And it's only him we need to lift up at all times. Amen. But the seduction is coming. You know, I, I, I get uh, our convention saying, you know, oh, there's this program that we've got it out. And you really need to do this program. Most of the time what I see this program is about how to elevate self. And where is Christ left? He's left in the dust. But did he say to us, when I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself? And what a task. Try to lift him up. I'll tell you what is required. When people have walked in this church, you know what they've told me? There's something very different in this church. Yeah. I'm saying, okay, what are you noticing? When John McGregor came, the wife told me, he said, there was, with all the churches that have been and speaking at, when they entered the door, she said, I felt something very different. What was the difference? The difference was God's people in humility, loving and serving Him. And you thought you are really loving and serving Him? We have just begun, people. Yeah. You see, when Christ takes His residence in our hearts, should He change us from inside out? Then the question I have for you, why are some of you still living in bondage? Yeah. Why is yesterday's stupidity still holding your heart? Why is yesterday's fear still holding your heart? Oh, people tell me, man, I'm filled with the spirit. The next minute I see where that, what kind of spirit they have. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can live in bondage and still manifest a lot of manifestation that's around us. You see, this church, this institution that God is going to destroy has be, is religious and is also commercial. And even kings will bow down. Wouldn't it be good when we get our, our president and we get our premiers and we get our politicians come down and bow down in our church and come and worship with us and lift their hands up and praise God? Yeah, and they're doing it in humility, having been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ in a different ballgame. But if they're just coming to gain some notoriety and get us to vote for them, it's a different ballgame, isn't it? So how are we as a church to protect ourselves from that stupidity? Everybody likes a flash. Everybody wants to have their pictures posted in the newspaper. But you know what? I've learned in the simplicity of God's love for me. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what I want. <coughs> what would you want? Like I shared with you one time, I had um, I got a notification <coughs> Uh, when I was a student at Dallas, that I had been chosen to be in the book of books, where my name is going to be inserted, and it's this book is going to be in the library, uh, Congress Library in the United States of America. Man, I said, who am I to have my name written in that book? Well, then I found out they put my name there, which was great. I, I don't mind living or trying here and there. But then I had to pay $100 to get that book. 
<laughs> I'm Asian. Close with a Jew. Everything God puts me in, in my hand. What is put in my hand has purpose for his kingdom. And I have no right to waste it. So to cut it short, I didn't buy the book. But my name is in Library of Congress. You want to go and check it out? It's up to you. <laughs> I've never taken time to check it out because they wrote me a notification lately, uh, recently back and said, your name is, has been in the book of I don't care. I want my name in only one place, the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. See, nobody can erase that name. Nobody can play with that name because now it belongs to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So you see, church, the seduction <laughs> is coming. It's on our doorstep. We can be bigger. We can do big things. Oh, we would not have to worry about the finances. In fact, I'll tell you, even the government of New Brunswick, if you comply with their stupidity, they will give us any kind of money we want. But dare we? If Christ wants to keep his church in poverty, let him keep his church in poverty. If Christ wants to splash his church with resources beyond we can even think or imagine, let him do it. But make sure it is he who is doing it. So we come. As this angel comes down from heaven, remember what the word says, he's got great authority. And the earth was made bright with his glory. See, the enemy has got its brightness, but it's never showing the brightness of Christ. Verse 2, and he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become now Babylon. Remember Saddam Hussein, before he was taken out, he was literally building, rebuilding the city of Babylon. Here, can I say to you, it's not only referring to a particular city. No, 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 no. It's referring to the whole world system. Like I said, you want to eat gold? Go to Dubai. You'll be able to eat gold. I mean, what? And then recently Dubai was <laughs> suffered a sandstorm. I mean, you, it's, it's one of the phenomena of the world. Of that. <coughs> and then you look at Jerusalem. All old rocks and stones. And you wonder, what are they fighting there for? But don't ever forget, God's presence was there. So you see, the world is setting up their own cities. And it's attracting a lot of us. Watch out. Because the Bible tells us what God is going to do to this place. The third verse, for all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of a sexual immorality. <laughs> And the kings of the earth have committed immorality <coughs> with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of a luxurious living. This is going to be a spiritual entity. Let's say this Babylon that is referred to symbolically is going to be a church. It's going to be a religious institution now joined up with a business institution and it's going to be a powerful entity. But I'll tell you what. When Jesus said in Matthew 28, all power has been given to whom? To me. Where? In heaven and earth. <coughs> you see, Satan wants all the glory to himself. And even though it is holding this religious institution up for a time, for a moment, it's going to turn and devour that religious institution because Satan can have no competition because he wants to be the top dog he wants to be the most glorious. And he will destroy this false religious institution. I just want to leave one more thought to you. Can Satan destroy us? So what's the protection over you as a Christian? What's the protection over this church?
But remember that him, my hope is built. But can we not, kings, clear build our hope in nothing else but Jesus Christ? So don't be taken by the pomp <clears throat> and the prestige and all these things you see that some religious institution has. <clears throat> be taken and be occupied with Christ as Lord and Savior. Because He will prepare our hearts for the end days. I don't know how many more days He has given me to live this out of eternity. But folks, I want to gear up that every day I will count for him. Would you do that? It's not just a commitment, yes, I think I'll do that. It's a commitment that will cost you your whole life. That's why Paul was able to write for me to use Christ to die. And this is where we are going to see what happens in chapter 18 and the verdict that God is going to bring on Babylon. Read ahead verse 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out for my people, lest you take part in your sins, lest you share in your plagues. You see, God is making a call today to you, to me. What are you attracted for? What, what attracts you? Where do you put your time and your energy? What monument are you building for yourself? God always shows mercy, even in the middle of judgment. And His mercy is seen in verse 4 of chapter 18. Verse 5, For her sins are hid as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others. Repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she mixed. And as she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a light measure of torment and mourning, since in her heart she says, I sit as queen, I'm no widow, and mourning I shall never see. For this reason her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burnt up with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. This mighty God is my Savior not judge. So you know what? Can we together come to the point to say Jesus is Lord. He is my Savior. My Redeemer. And then would you go and line out your life to walk in that narrow path he set for us until the day he says come up here my child. Until that day Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Our God reigns. So you see, when you come to Revelation chapter 17 and 18, it has already begun, people. It broke my heart to see Hillary Clinton walking into a church, the woman who openly advocates abortion on demand, a woman has no problem with the LBGT movement and in fact likes it and yet was given platform in a church in the United States of America. It's coming. It's an overdose step. So you see, God's words <coughs> is a warning and a preparation. Let's prepare well. Father, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Hard sometimes to understand, Lord. You can say, how can so many good things go to the devil? But Lord, those are just good things that will perish. But you come and you give us life. You give us eternal life. Prepare our hearts and our mind to be ready for homecoming. And Father, we know it will be quite a homecoming where you have promised to wipe every tear away, every sorrow, every sickness, every death, you will wipe away. Until then, Lord, would you hold us small, weak, but 
get powerful because our Lord reigns, would you hold us in your hands and would you lead us? For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>